Okay, let's talk about the speed of sound in air as opposed to water or a metal. <coughs> we know that in air, or any gas, it obeys this law that we will never use, that will never appear on the exam. What we will use is that the speed of sound in air is 343 meters per second at 20 degrees C at room temperature. Now, if we look at this table, we can see that there's a speed of sound in air at room temperature. Here's the speed of sound in water at room temperature. And you can see that it's roughly four times faster. And then if we look at the speed of sound in, in something like steel, it's much, much faster, faster, more than 11 times faster. And that's because the neighbors are tightly bound in this lattice work, and you can't, you can't start gossip without it getting out of hand, uh, just racing from, from one neighbor to the next. Okay? Now, what we're going to do is answer this question. I'm trying to send a message to Flipper, my dolphin, and so I go out in my little boat, and I take a foghorn, I point it down towards the water, and I go, Eh. Okay? Now that sound wave passes from the air into the water and travels to Flipper. And so the question is, uh, what does Flipper uh, experience? So that sound wave passes from air into water where the wave speed's about four times faster. Which of these things change and how? The wavelength, the period, the frequency. Well, let's try to visualize this. These lines represent what we call wave fronts. Those are the compressed regions of the air. If we were to use an analogy of a water wave, it would be the crest, okay? But in air, it's where the molecules are, uh, the pressure is highest, the molecules are scrunched together. Now, the dis distance from crest to crest is a wavelength. Now if we point this <coughs> foghorn towards the water and go eh, the wave moves towards the water. Now right before it hits the water, we're going to set up some counters, just like at Walmart. We're going to set up two lawn chairs and we're going to set up two counters. These counters each have one of those little devices that you push every time a uh, a customer comes into Walmart and these counters are going to count the, the wave fronts that go past them and watch what happens as the wave propagates. That first wave front hits the water and takes off, okay? It just really is going places. It's going four times faster than it was in the air. And now as these waves continue to propagate, Every time one gets in the water, it just takes off really fast. However, you'll notice that I'm always going to have the same reading on these two counters. And that's because the disturbance that causes the wave in the water is the wave in the air. We talked about the fact that when you set up a wave, the frequency of the wave is the same as the frequency of the source, the disturbance. Well, it's the wave fronts hitting the water that are creating the wave in the water. Okay? And so they have to have the same frequency. What about the wavelengths? Well, because those waves are traveling four times faster in the water, the distance between those, uh, those wave fronts is four times greater in the water. But the frequency is the same. Now, if we go back to our original question, the wavelength in the water is going to get longer, the period is going to stay the same, and the frequency is going to stay the same. Now, what that means 
is that if I blow that foghorn towards the water and it has a frequency of 250 hertz, that's the frequency the flipper's going to hear. Now, your gut's telling you that doesn't sound right. If you've done much swimming or scuba diving or snorkeling, you know that when your friend's yelling at you from the boat, your friend sounds different. Your friend doesn't sound the same frequency as when you're in the boat with your friend. Now, part of that uh, has to do with the fact that, uh, well, most of that has to do with the fact that high frequencies get damped out as you go deeper and deeper into the water. Now, if your friend was just singing to you with a pure tone, you would hear that pure tone at the same frequency underwater. But when you're shouting, shark, get out of the water, quick, you're sending all sorts of different frequencies, high frequencies, low frequencies. Your particular voice has a special combination of frequencies that makes it you that says, oh man, I know who that is, okay? And as that special set of frequencies go down into the water, the high frequencies get damped out really quick. And all that's left is a low frequency. And all of a sudden you sound a little different, a little lower than you would if everyone was in the boat. See if your neighbor followed that argument. See if your neighbor's on the boat.